Are PRP plus CRP injections for hair loss more effective than PRP alone? Thank you for your question. You submitted your question without a photo, and you're asking is PRP with CRP uh, more effective than PRP alone for hair loss? Well, I can certainly help you uh, get a sense of some perspective on a question like this as there have been all kinds of uh, competitive statements made by doctors to try to show one method being better than the other uh, when it comes to treating hair loss. A little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. I'm also the founder of Trichostem Hair Regeneration Centers, a system we developed using PRP with a material called Extracellular Matrix, a wound healing technology which we originally used to help people during hair transplant. In the past seven to eight, seven to eight years, uh, we, I have been very much aware and had my finger on the pulse of different um, innovations to try to find a, the optimal way to help people with male or female pattern hair loss. As I said earlier, we developed a treatment using a material called extracellular matrix, which is a wound healing material derived from pig bladder. And it is essentially a way to stimulate adult stem cells to heal an area which is injured. Now, how that became a benefit to hair loss was actually an accidental discovery when we were using the, say, this material to help the donor area uh, from a hair transplant heal better, as well as to improve the survivability of hair grafts. Well, at this point, I'm feeling very vindicated because when we were first developing this and doing this treatment and we were showing preliminary results, a lot of my colleagues, particularly in the hair transplant world, wanted to have nothing to do with it and also were often dismissive, not just in the hair transplant world, but in uh, dermatology and aesthetic medicine. Move the clock forward, people start to see that this is actually working very, very well and started to compete by using terms like more concentrated PRP and better PRP, and now you're dealing with CRP or cytokine-rich plasma. Well, there is a lot to be learned, no question, about certain differentiations between these methods. And it takes some true standardization and very, very large numbers of patients that are appropriately randomized and what's called basically stand the test of double-blind controlled studies to make these distinctions. However, I would say that from my experience, and we treat patients from all over the world, essentially the hair regeneration system that I've developed over the several years, which I continuously looked at very critically to make sure that we were ultimately getting consistency and good results, um, we ultimately were able to develop an algorithm. An algorithm based on what also I developed was a classification system. You see, when, when people are using platelet-rich plasma, whether it's PRP or cytokine-rich plasma, I would say that there is a certain limit in terms of the longevity of effect. And the reason is, is that the effect, the, the response of the body to platelet-rich plasma can only last for so long. And now we can differentiate when it comes to a wound healing process. And for example, platelet-rich plasma, one of the first group of doctors to use this were oral surgeons and they were using it to help facilitate the healing of dental implants. Then it became orthopedic surgeons who are now using it very commonly. And so when it comes to hair loss treatment, 
we're talking about physiologic effects which have yet to be fully defined. And what I would say from my experience using it for skin rejuvenation, that similarly, that PRP alone or CRP alone will ha probably have an effect that will relatively plateau after a couple of months. With hair regeneration, using this wound healing material that I would say has been really remarkable in its ability to help me in other areas of my practice when it comes to incisions, whether it comes to regenerating tissues such as cartilage, and in its use in other areas of medicine, it has really shown tremendous value in what I see as amplifying the, the potential of the body's ability to repair. So for example, the same material was used to restore a, an entire fingertip and has been done several times, including the bone, the muscle, the skin, the nail. Now, yes, this is empiric data and is often, uh, often uh, potentially criticized, but 80% of the practice of medicine is based on empiric data and is based on clinical experience. So in my clinical experience, when I do a treatment with hair regeneration, I've, treat, done, I've done it in one single injection session, and I've had patient who are, patients who have been able to sustain improvement for over five years. Of course, that doesn't apply to everybody. We've learned that over time. And we looked at patients in very critical ways, looking at specific uh, demographic vari variables, or essentially looking at gender, age, age of onset of hair loss, rate of progression, degree of progression, and other medical variables, including previous surgery, previous medical therapies, pretty hormonal issues, etc. Ultimately, we've developed a classification system, and with that comes a treatment plan that I've been able to establish, and with a certain high likelihood of successful outcome based on individualized treatment plans. So I think that right now there is kind of a, and it has been often the case in other things as well, whether it's lasers or, you know, particularly it's been fun with watching the PRP wars, that essentially doctors are competing by saying their machine is better and one PRP is more concentrated than the other. But as I said, the first doctors to use PRP were oral surgeons, and the approach was very, very simple, just basic spinning and concentrating. And so I think it's very easy for patients to get confused when one doctor claims that their t machine is better than, or their, their, their particular um, uh, concentration is better. And of course, it can be very logical arguments, but can it be clinically proven? What we've done over time is looked at our data very, very critically, and although many different options have come before me, and I certainly have the flexibility, I'm a cosmetic surgeon and I have, I have multiple lasers and multiple technologies in my offices, I can't, there's nothing I can't really have in my practice, and I have yet to see any, any type of um, technology exceed the potential, the results that we've been getting with platelet-rich plasma and extracellular matrix. And it is a tool, and it's important to understand that hair loss is also, it's not being cured, it's being managed. So you also have to use multiple tools. For males, for example, we have a discussion, especially for younger males, about the use of finasteride, a DHT blocker, in combination with, with our hair regeneration treatment, to maximize the longevity of the effect of our treatment. The stimulatory effect of hair growth should be sustained for as long as possible, and you want to use whatever tools you can. So ultimately, I'm always talking about customizing treatment and providing patients with accurate prognosis and likelihood of success. And it is, it's very easy to get lost in, in, the, in the war of of, of terminology, but really look at the experience of the doctor who's using whatever treatment they're offering. Look to see how long have they 
can, can they look back at their patients and say how many years they were able to get benefit and how is it better than something else? And that, I think, is an important thing to ask the question whenever you do a consultation. And I think that there's an opportunity for you to find the right doctor for your, for your situation. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question. Thank you.